Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Paint Table. This is my weekly show about what I got done, what I'm working on, and what is coming up. So, this week I finished some miniatures for Monster Apocalypse, the last of my protector stuff. Um, I shouldn't say the last, I need to pick up Armadax, which I'll probably do next week at some point, uh, just to finish off my Pterosaurs. But I did finish off the Raptixes, which are the units for the Pterosaurs I hadn't gotten done, um, as well as my Shadow Sun Industries building and uh, Zora Raiden. So Raiden this time, yeah, not Zormax. I, I get them confused. <laughs> um, so the, the rest of my predictor stuff that I had is finished. It's really just rounding that out with the last of the pterosaurs. Um, I might get a second pack of the Carnodons, just so that I have 15 of them. Because the repair trucks, the Shadow Field guy, I want to have, I think, as my last five for them. They're just kind of dirtling around fixing buildings, and then just dinosaurs for the dinosaur faction. Uh, and I think I'm good. It's Armored Axe and another pack of Carnodons, I think. And that's the Protectors finished for a while. Um, I'm going to play some games. I got to try out the Shadow Sun Industries against Mike this week, and it was a lot of fun. Um, I'm really enjoying Monster Apocalypse. It's a great, it's a great lunch hour game. And for uh, my friends and I that we don't get to game as often after hours or at work anymore, um, to be able to play like a game in a lunch break, it's perfect. A crush hour game in a lunch break is is just, just the right amount of game. Easy to put up and, and take down. And then after that, I think we're going to work on um, just terrain and stuff. I might build some buildings. And I'm probably going to wait until uh, the uh, the Mecha Godzilla faction comes out. <laughs> what are they called? Evil Ubercore? The Ubercore? It's the, the Destroyer's version of... Um, of, uh, of the humans, basically, the human bad guys, and they make like Mecha Terracon and all those people. I'm, I'm pretty jazzed about them. They're probably the new, I think with King Kondo and the apes, they're the new bad guy faction that's coming out. That's when I'll come back to my bad guys. Um, folks making Robo, Robo Godzillas and stuff. It just looks like a lot of fun. And they're kitschy and silly. And then I've been working on stuff for Moonstone. Uh, Moonstone's a new indie game, came out last year, late last year. And uh, I'm really excited about it. It's, how do I describe Moonstone? I'm gonna go, when you see the Let's Play for this, which will be next week actually, um, you'll be able to see a little bit more about, about the faction and stuff. But my, my too long didn't read version of this is if, <laughs> so if um, you crossed, I guess, Brian Froud's art style, so like the movie Labyrinth, um, with something from Terry Gilliam, like The Adventures of Baron Von Munchausen, you'd get Moonstone. If those guys went drinking for a weekend and decided to make a miniature game, I feel like that's what Moonstone would be. And a lot of you might not get those references, but those of you that do, there's some really whimsical, neat miniatures, hilarious names, a really innovative combat system, and models I've been really excited to paint. I haven't had time to for a while, so I'm getting them all done this weekend. Um, so I finished the first four uh, for the human faction, and I'm going to start working on the goblins this weekend. And we're going to try it next week. So look forward to that on Tuesday to see a Let's Play for Moonstone, and you can check out some models. So let's see what I got done and what is coming up. So first things first, here's my Monster Apocalypse stuff. I finished off Zor Raiden in his shiny, fancy grow suit. Um, if you haven't been keeping up on the Monster Apocalypse, the Shadow Sun Syndicate is basically like the... Um, they're Ultraman. Like, they, get, they wear suits to make them bigger, so... Uh, in Avengers terms, they're Ant-Man, um, and they, they grow big to fight monsters, basically. So he's the other of the, the first two monsters for them. Um, I think eventually there's plans for third monsters for all the factions, but this rounds out my ability to just play them. And then their industry building, um, which some people have done into like black and dark colors, but I figured they're in the same grow big metal, <laughs> the same whatever pim particle uh, color metal that, um, that the suits would be in. So I had mine like that. And they, they represent like teleport areas. You can zap units in between them and stuff. Uh, and then over here are the Raptixes. They're the anti-air dinosaurs. So I'm not going to have too many of them. And there'll just be an option for if I fight, you know, Martians and predominantly fighting or uh, flying um, bad guy factions. They'll be handy to have around, but I think a second unit of Carnodons, or a second pack of the Carnos Carnodons, Carnosaurs, the fighty ones, um, to back up Terracon and, uh, and and the big boy Armadax are probably my my last Armadax and them are probably my last my last protectors paint thing because I've got three full factions painted at that point, um, which gives me lots of lots of play options for you guys to watch and stuff too, which is kind of where my my brain goes with that stuff. Um, so six guys on for Monster Apocalypse, and then over here to Moonstone. Okay, so in the middle. Uh, is, and I bet you can pick him out, Baron Von Fancy Hat. Now this is the starter set for the humans, the, 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 the four players basically, or the four models basically come in this, this box set back here for Moonstone. And you can see here just based on the art that this is, there's a, there's a great deal of whimsy in this game. Uh, the, on the left there is Friar Flavius, he's the starter set exclusive, and he is, he is the first time I ever painted cankles on a miniature. 
That was a little bit disturbing. <laughs> Just a little bit disturbing. And he's your freaky healer with uh, with some mace clubbiness. And then there's Flintlock, who's your sniper. He's your little man at arms that follows Baron Von Fancy Hat around. And then last but not least, we've got Eric the Squire, who is the uh, probably the most fun I've had painting like a kid face. He has the most awesome Dennis the Menace look to him. And he carries around all of Baron Von Hat Fancy Hat stuff and also has a wooden sword that he goes and fights guys with. So just like tons of character in these miniatures. They were just a joy to paint. Um, and if you're just looking for like a, a wonderful collection of fantasy miniatures, um, I can't I can't recommend this line highly enough because they are just just wonderful. And then Baron von Fancy Hat, who is basically Baron von Munchausen, if you've ever seen the Adventures of Baron von Munchausen, he's he's channeling that pretty hard, um, and does have a gloriously fancy hat and waxed mustache. Um, and those are my first four of the human faction, basically, to uh, to give the game a go with, uh, as I'm gonna just play out of the star set for the first game for you guys to watch, because that makes the most sense. And here's the rest of the stuff I have to paint for Moonstone. See, the other half of the star set is these guys right here, um, and they also have amazing names. There's Beaky Bobby in the, uh, the, Venu the I guess the Plague Doctor mask there. Uh, riding literally a pug, a giant pug, is Doug the Flatulent, and I think the I think Doug the Flatulent's actually the dog, <laughs> and he's he's a war pug uh, with a goblin riding him with awesome, and you can see here like when I say Brian Froud, definitely that that labyrinth style goblin riding these guys, which are pretty cool. Um, there's the vicious midget is actually his name. He's a tiny goblin or maybe just a midget, and he's wearing armor and stabs you in the groin. He's got a real time bandits thing happening here. Uh, and then finally, Grub. He's a goblin wizard, but he accidentally transformed himself partly into a cockroach. You know, that happens to goblins sometimes, and he's got his little, like, like, like vegetable duster there for killing other bugs, and a stabby thing, and is generally hilarious looking, and wears a wizard hat. So those are the four I'm going to paint for the starter set. Uh, I've got the two first expansions too, um, which uh, actually next week there's going to be, I think, a crowdfund. If you're interested in it, this is a good time to get into this because I think the, I think there'll be some bundles. There's a crowdfund for new expansions uh, on top of these ones that you see here. And they'll probably do some stuff with the rule book and the star set and stuff too if you're interested. But we'll, we'll stay tuned for that next week. Uh, but the first one is Fritz, Cra Quack, and Agatha. Uh, these are the humans. Fritz is a huge human mercenary, just like a big dude with a sword. Agatha, she is Agatha Tavernfrau. Uh, they're serving drinks, and then Quack, who makes bombs, and then shows them to you and goes, hey, look, boss, look what I made. And he's like a little alchemist, cra crazy alchemist fella. Uh, and then for the um, for the goblins, there's C6 Stew, who's kind of like Dobby, if Dobby was a drunk sailor, <laughs> with his, like, bill hook and, and beer overflowing. Um, Boom Boom McBoom is actually this guy's name. Uh, and he has a, a big, blood just archibus. <laughs> and then finally, uh, Shabaroon, who is um, half mushroom, and is kind of channeling the new Gloom Spike Gets thing there. He's got a mushroom growing out of him, and he's showing you his poking stick. Uh, and I'm really excited to give this game a go. The, the models, like I said, are gorgeous. There's going to be great additions to my fantasy miniature collection. Um, and I've had a ton of, of just fun painting the humans so far, so... Stay tuned for that next week on Tuesday. And then last but not least, I've I've started down the slippery path of Gundams. Um, we've been doing a bunch of play testing here at the studio for a new game uh, I'm putting together for Osprey, which I will talk about more in the future. But part of that is giant robots. And so I've been buying and collecting giant robot kits to convert up for some um, some games. So don't ask me about, about Gunpla stuff, because I don't know a lot about the TV shows. <laughs> I I have three or four friends right now trying to trying to try to indoctrinate me into watching every episode of Gundam ever made and the and the importance of the history of Gundam, and I will do my best to bring myself up to speed. But right now I'm just finding giant robot kits I like a lot, and buying them. So I've grabbed a couple of high grade um, one one forty fourth scale Gundam kits. There's actually a couple more at home too. I got some Skull Squadron stuff that I'm painting up, uh, and I want to get into. A lot of the Iron Blooded Orphan stuff. There's also the new 30 Minute Mission stuff coming from Bandai. Um, as far as like production goes, I'm pretty I'm pretty well versed. But story wise, I don't know who are in these robots or what they do. Uh, and I'll be converting them for wargaming use by sticking them on um, uh, basically standardized size bases for the game that we're we're designing. And um, yeah, your your light frames will go on to uh, two inch bases, so like 50 mil. And then medium frames will be on 4-inch bases, which fit these 1-144th scale Gundams perfectly. And then large ones will go on 6-inch bases, um, which are 150 mil. So just a little bit smaller, basically, than the one Alaria, um, what's her name? Uh, Archeon or uh, Gladriel? No, Alario? Alario, the Everqueen. 
bits more than those. Uh, but Workshop actually makes uh, 50 mil and 100 mil bases. The Venom Crawler is on 100 mil, and the new obliterators are on 50 mils. So perfect for basing these guys up for some war gaming. So yeah, been doing a lot of kit bashing recently. So I've got a very busy schedule right now, but it's been a lot of fun, and I'm excited to show you more of that stuff in the future. So there you go, another on the paint table done and on the books. Lots more to come next week. Um, I will be away next week, so I'm going to be filming that one relatively early on. You'll probably see this um, this Moonstone stuff get finished and get some sneak peeks into what I'm working on in the future. But yeah, until next Saturday, um, which will be filmed probably on Tuesday. <laughs> I'm Ash. Happy working. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.